Welcome back to AW Football Sunday afternoon as we flash back to last night. Thrilling finish between Melbourne and North Melbourne. Uh, the Kangaroos came storming home but fell short by three points. The Demons able to hang on. And one of uh, Melbourne's prime movers, Alex Neil Bullen, has been good enough to join us. Alex, thanks very much for having a chat. Thanks for having me on, guys. Well, what an uh, interesting game it was. Uh, one of momentum. You guys had the momentum in the first and third quarters, North Melbourne in the second and certainly the, the last quarter. But let's go back to the final term. You're up, by, I think, by 33 at three-quarter time. What do you think shifted so dramatically the momentum their way in that, in that final quarter? Yeah, it was. It was a, a tight contest across the, the whole game. Uh, yeah, probably that, that last quarter, North just got all the momentum and we tried everything we could to wrestle back that momentum. And if you can do that in footy, it goes a long way. And I guess North, that you could see that they were playing with a bit more speed, a bit more uh, less fear going through the middle. And uh, yeah, we, we really did try to to slow the game down, just, I guess, hold up the momentum. And luckily we were able to do that uh, with just enough time left on the clock to, to come away with the four points. But I think that just proves how tight the competition is this year. It's quite phenomenal. And no matter what, what margin you're, you're either ahead or behind, you've just, you see teams now have systems that allow you to make up margins, large margins in a short amount of time. So really proud of our group, how we were able to implement some learnings from um, a couple of close games this year where we, we weren't on the right side of the result, but we were able to hold up strong and uh, we'll, we'll take a lot away from this win. Just on that, Alex, at the end when a team is coming at you and it can creep up and you, you get to the point where, gee, we could get overrun here, how do you, obviously you do a lot of scenario training and you discuss it beforehand, but you know, make your mind up as to whether or not you're going to try and save the game or try and attack the game and, and score again? Yeah, it's a really, really good question. We always refer to when a clear message comes out about what mode we're in and we always need to make sure everyone knows that. So all the players 18 on the field need to know exactly what part of the, the, the game plan, I guess, we're in. Um, and also last night, I don't know if it was luck or whatnot, but the time comes around on the, the signage, and I, I think it was a ball up, a stoppage, and I saw a glimpse. It was like four minutes, 30 to go, and that gave me a great sense of how long was left, and you can almost start to... to if they do get another goal, you know that's that's probably the moment where we've got to stick into to saving this game. Um, and I guess from there, you, you're able to implement all the things that we, we put in place uh, Monday to Friday to, to ensure, and sometimes it doesn't happen because teams are just too good, but to reduce the likelihood of that team scoring scoring a goal. And then if they do score a goal, the flip side is how quick can you, you change into trying to win the game back. So it's the, the beautiful thing about our sport. Um, you just got to make sure all 22, 23 players are across the same messaging. Hey, Alex, it's a, it's a fascinating combo, this one, because I reckon even though scoring hasn't increased at all over a number of years, I reckon when teams get the momentum, they, they score quickly when they have that momentum. We saw a couple of games yesterday. Brisbane did it, and, and Sydney scored a heap of goals really, really quickly. So when, right at the end of a game like your game last night, how many, is it? Is it 90 seconds? Is it two minutes? How much time do you have when that message comes out to shut it down and... It, What's the, what's too early to shut it down? Yeah, it's it's probably a lot about what's happening in the game, Richo. So the easiest part of a game is, say, a team kicks a goal and it's within six points. That's a pretty clear um, time of a game where there's only, say, less than three, four minutes to go. You know what you need to do at that point in time. It's probably the, the time in a game where there's repeat stoppages, there's repeat stoppages, and it might be that seven to ten point margin either way. And you've got to think to yourself as a group, are we trying to save this game? That's if you're ahead. Or if you are behind, are we kicking into just like that fearless footy that we saw North do last night? So that's probably where you rely on your leaders. I'm sure every team would say the same thing. You've got a spine that understand the game really well. And um, say in our example, if Maxi Gorn says this is what we're in, it's up to the 17 other boys to, to jump on board his messaging and, and implement that. Because it only takes, I guess, a lapse in concentration or someone not executing a role, or you've seen in finals games, close games this year, where a team just gets a, uh, an opportunity and players now are so skilled that they only need half an opportunity and they can execute. And, you know, you're not walking away with a four-point win. Hey, Alex, you mentioned how tight this competition is, and I've never seen it as tight. I mean, if you don't turn up and you're a couple of percent off, you probably lose a game. I think Carlton and the Swans look like they may have just separated a little bit, but... In between that, it's just incredible how tight. Is it the tightest you've ever seen it? 
Yeah, definitely. And your point there has never sung more true around if you as a team are a little bit off and um, you, no matter what your opposition is, they they can uh, manipulate that and take advantage of that. So we've seen that with ourselves. We've had some losses this year where we weren't up to our standard and we've been uh, kicked in the face with our performance. And on the flip side, if, if you can get hold of a team, you can also, like you said earlier, like Brisbane yesterday, put on a big score really quickly and almost put the game to bed. So it's an exciting for the for the whole competition. Every every team would be arriving to the ground with a little bit of self belief, like we're a chance here. And and then on the flip side, you have to make sure men, you got the right mentality each game because you can't sit back and expect things to happen in in this uh, era of footy. Alex, no Christian Petrarca for the first time last night. We saw a few go through the midfield. Trent Rivers, obviously the the, the main one there. How do you think you covered him? Yeah, I thought Trent Trent Rivers and Tommy Sparrow in and around the footy. I thought they were really important with how we got the ball from inside to outside. And then you saw the likes of Jack Viney just stand up, huge leader of the footy club. And I felt like the mix was really good. We saw guys grab an opportunity. Um, we're not going to leave it up to just the one bloke. You saw Colton Tholstrup play his second game of AFL footy. And I thought the intensity he played with the four quarters really stood out. And he was huge for us around the footy. So it's just a great opportunity. Although we're losing one of our best players um, for the season, on the flip side, you've got to look at how a team can grow from that. And I'm really excited by that opportunity that we have as a football team. And um, guys like Colton, Brownie, Connor Brown come on last night and implement that game-saving tackle. Like these, these are the opportunities that you're going to start seeing. And Melbourne fans should be very excited by that. Alex, uh, all players in a, in a game of footy and over their careers have put a bit of mayonnaise on a free kick. I did it many times in a marking contest. And I think every player has. There's been a bit of criticism around the uh, Stephen May incident with the Eddie Ford tackle last night. Are we at a stage where players are trying to milk the uh, tackle, dangerous tackle, a little bit? Um, it's something, as a tackler, you're well aware of, I guess, the force and the angle that you're coming in on. Um, you'd probably put that on the responsibility of the bloke getting tackled and also for the, I guess, the umpiring uh, officiating of the game to be consistent in that area. It's obviously tough, but... I guess we just got to make sure as players we're doing our part, trying to lay a tackle, but not with the, the aggression or the intensity that could potentially hurt someone. And also, as a player, not yeah, not trying to to enforce a, a free kick if if it potentially isn't there. But the game, as you guys know, is so hard to officiate, and all we ask as players is consistency from from both ends. It's so hard, isn't it? I mean, look at that Dangerfield one the other night, and I think there's nothing else he really could have done there. He tried to yeah. do everything right. It's, did he it's end getting up in the uh, game? What? I didn't see that. He did get a game. It's it's yeah, it's in a difficult spot at the moment. I mean, the sling ones we understand, but it's gone past that now. Yeah, and it's just and it's something that with the so I've actually had the suspension for a dangerous tackle back in 2020, and I feel like the game since that time has come a long way. The dangerous tackles, like as players, we know our responsibilities. To not drive someone into the ground, you just got to make sure if yeah if you're if you're going into the if you're going to take the player into the ground, you got to minimise the the chances that their head does hit the turf. So yeah, it's going to be a balancing act moving forward as players. But like I said earlier in the piece, we just got to make sure we as our responsibility as the tackler is to execute, but also um, take care of the player you're tackling as best you can. Just before we let you go, Alex, your forward line struggled a bit last night. Um, you know, Bailey Fritch was well held. Um, a player I want to ask you about who I thought um, is a bit of an X-factor player, did his ACL at the end of last year, is a really tough matchup and just gives you a different look in that forward line is Jake Melksham. How far is, is he away, do you reckon, from playing senior footy? Yeah, Melky's not far off at all. He'll be looking to come back uh, over the next two to three weeks, pulling the boots on again. He's been training with the group for... Uh, a few weeks now, so yeah, he's not only his on-field performance, as you said, he's he's a really hard matchup, but the the game sense and the the experience he brings, um, it's going to be a very exciting uh, prospect to, to include him um, in the back end of the year, and he's someone that will only help our team moving forward. And I yeah, really can't wait to see him back in the the Melbourne jumper because he's worked so hard to get himself back to a position where he can uh, yeah, hopefully allow us to play some good footy in the back end and we'll see where that lands us as a team. 
Well, yep, he could make a difference in that forward line. It uh, doesn't get any easier next week. You've got a rampaging Brisbane on the back of a big win over Port Adelaide at the Gabba next Friday night. Good luck with that. Good luck for the rest of the year. Alex, and thanks for having a chat today. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend.